Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about the February twenty, uh, February second, uh, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, we have a, another four game slate. Um, two games in China and two games in Korea. So yeah, without any further ado, let's dive in. I'll try to keep this video a little bit shorter than the one yesterday. Um, I think <laughs> I was hesitant on a lot of the games all the three games um except for the sandbox game that i was hesitant to make a pick because like i said they were all toss-up games based on my stats based on the stats that i reviewed and researched and also the eye test so and believe it or not all three underdogs in those matchups ended up winning so if you played the underdogs you know the 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 lower owned you know more leverage uh picks you know, kudos to you. So that's great. Um, hope you guys made some money off of that. Um, today we don't have as many toss-ups in my opinion. Um, so I'll dive into that. Okay. So two games in China. It's uh Ninjas and Pajamas NIP versus JD Gaming JDG. JDG is a huge favorite at minus five five fifty. And then the next matchup in China is Top Esports versus Rare Adam where top esports is the biggest favorite on the slate amongst all four matches. So yeah, let's dive into that. The JDG matchup is interesting. JDG beat, let's see, I have my notes right here. Uh, beat BLG in the last game and they played pretty well. I mean, I think it was a best of three. They went to the game three, ended up having, giving Ruler the pentakill at the end and Kanavi played amazing, obviously. Um, and I think there were some communication issues in the bottom lane, especially with Ruler and Missing not being able to communicate. And I think now, like for the first six months, they were saying Kanavi is going to try to translate everything Ruler says. You know, obviously Ruler coming from Korea, um, there are some language issues, and I think that might hurt them. But is it going to hurt them enough that their talent skills are, you know, so much better um, then ninjas in pajamas, in my opinion, and XLB. You know, when I looked up the stats, he is toward the bottom of the earned gold uh, per minute metric that I look at for junglers often. Um, that's not a good sign, especially because they had they already had two series, so their his sample size is pretty good. Um, going up against Ultra Prime, who has a bad jungler, I think in Ning. Um, and then they lost, um, Ninjas in Pajamas lost against Rare Adam uh, in their next their next series, and they actually have pretty good jungle control percentage. And I'll talk a little more, a little bit more about Rare Adam in the next matchup. But you know, I think NIP struggled against against Leian, uh for Rare Adam, so I think XLB has uh, provide uh, performed underwhelmingly. Um, so I think. That plays in huge favor of Kanavi. Obviously, Kanavi is the top three, if not the top jungler in the LPL or maybe around the world. Um, and he's shown that in the first series as well. He's such a creative jungler. And I think he's going to have a fun game um, and fun series against NIP today. So, you know, I have a JDG winning. That's my match prediction. Um, and, and I think um, the kills over under by Vegas... Uh, was set at uh, 25 totals, total kills. Um, and then JDG plays a little bit faster than NIP, and I think that plays in favor of JDG. And this one actually has the highest combined kills per minute metric at 0.84. Um, so I do think this is a good matchup and good team to stack for JDG. And they're probably going to be a chalk um, uh, team to stack unfortunately, but, you know, I think it's a good chalk to eat, to be honest, to, to, uh, tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, and then I, th I think I've pointed these out, haven't pointed these out, actually, jungle control percentage and lane control percentage and then gold spent per, uh, per, the, per well, I guess for the team. Actually, NIP actually has some advantages there, but, like I said, they played against, I think, Ultra Prime, who was a really bad team. So I think that kind of padded their stats. And then JDG played against a pretty good BLG team. So I think that those stats are a little inflated, in my opinion, given the matchup history uh, for NIP. 
So I'm not I'm not giving huge merit to that. That's this is kind of like where I think, you know, you just look at the stats and, you know, but you don't have any context behind it. You have to look at the common well, not hopefully common opponents at some point in the season, but you know what what the what the opponents have been for the for these teams and then obviously the strength of those opponents and the strength of schedule so far and i think you know i think jdg beat a really good blg team whereas nip beat a very underwhelming ultra prime and then lost against a pretty good ra team so i do think jdg should win this matchup despite these metrics uh here shown um, I do think XLB is not as a good of a jungler as Kanavi, and you know how much, you know how much I value the junk good junglers, and then Ruler obviously I think is better than Votic, and I think I do think there will be some language issue and communication issues that may hurt JDG in certain team fights, but overall in the series I think they're just too good um, for NIP to pull off an upset tonight. So. JDG is probably going to be the only exposure I'm going to have in this matchup. And obviously, Kanavi and Ruler will be the primary two pieces that you should think about using. The next matchup in China is Top Esports versus Rare Adam. Again, Top Esports is a big favorite at minus 600. Um, total kills over under is set at 25. And the combined kills per minute is set at 0.71. Comparative compared to the JDG matchup that I just talked about, it's a little bit lower. But top esports does like to play a little bit faster, and historically they like playing fast as well. So um, I think top esports will score well if they win. But are they gonna win? Uh, I think it's gonna be a closer matchup than the odds indicate. Um, I think Rare Adam actually has been playing pretty well. Um, they just beat um, Ninjas in Pajamas, like I said, um, and they. Also beat LGD, but LGD is probably one of the bottom tier teams, uh, bottom three teams in the LPL this year. So I'm not giving any merit to that. <laughs> but again, the win against NIP is a pretty good win for Rare Adam. Um, but is it good enough? I mean, is it good enough to beat top esports? Top esports, you know, they look really, really good against anyone's legend in their first series. Um, but anyone's legend has been horrible this season as well. I think they're one and four uh, in total uh, wins and losses. So I think top esports, you know, they were supposed to, they were, you know, expected to beat anyone's legend and they did, but they did lose to Weibo's gaming. And I think Weibo gaming is actually really, really talented and good this year with Xiao who added that, added to that team and the shy in the top lane, who's been playing really well, pulling out new champions, but, Anyway, I do think top esports, you know, should win this just based on the roster um, comparison here, as you can see on the screen. Um, but Tian actually, you know, the the stats I looked at for Tian, you know, we have a pretty sizable sample here, you know, in two series, I think, uh, for each of the, these two teams. And Tian's stats are actually toward the bottom. And then Leanne's is actually toward the top. Um, and I think that's a little inflated though, because like I said, Rare Adam played against one of the bottom tier teams in LGD, but then Top Esports also played against Anyone's Legend, you know, who is not as bad as LGD, but Anyone's Legend, you know, should help you patch your stats as well. So that's a little surprising that Tian hasn't been playing as well. Um, the metrics are not like, you know, flying out off the paper. So I, I do think. There's a little concern there for Tian, I think. And then Jackie Love, as you know, you know, he can make some bad mistakes, you know, here and there as well. Um, and then Cheng Tian, though, I think he's been playing well. Um, so I think I think top esports, like I said, are more talented, but I think it it all comes down to Tian's performance. I think I think he needs to have a good, decent, you know, jungle performance to kind of help the laners to get ahead and you know and w win later in team fights. Rare Adam's team fights actually look pretty good against Ninjas in pajamas, in my opinion. Um, I know they got they got an early lead in the first game of that series, and then they kind of snowballed after that. But Leanne actually kind of impressed me um, in that matchup against um, NIP's jungler uh, uh, to that oh, that that day. So I do think top esports should win, um, but some metrics are pointing that Rare Adam could be a live dog tonight. So maybe have a little bit of sprinkle of RA exposure tonight. I think that's probably how I'm going to approach it. 
so yeah, that's LPL. And like I said, the kill upside is pretty good. Um, I think both of these LPL matchups should score better than the LCK matchups, but that's not always the case. And for example, um, in the LCK, we have Fred Brian versus DRX. I do think this game, though, I think it's going to be the lowest um, scoring match. Um, I think the total kills over under is set at 21.5, and then combined colors kills per minute is set at 0.65. And I kind of looked at, you know, um, I, I actually posted these starters, expected starters on my tw uh, tweet. Um, but I do think Om T for Fred Brian and then Henna for Eddie Carey for Fred Brian actually have been playing pretty solid. I think they've been playing that you know so much better than Croco and Duckdom in my opinion. Um, the counterparts for DRX. Um, I do think Fred Brian should win this matchup. I think they're they're gonna pull off an upset. Um, but since it might be it, it will be likely it would likely be the lowest scoring matchup. I may hit do a complete fade or maybe use one of these teams in the team slot. Um, by hoping that they secure objectives and score well in that regard. But I do think if you are stacking in this matchup, I like Fred Brian as, you know, the underdog stack and then, you know, play the players that are much cheaper than the, you know, than the players that are, you know, playing for the favorite teams at DRX and any other teams that I just mentioned earlier in China. So yeah, I think Freddie Brian will be a good pick tonight. Um, I'm not sure about the kill upside, so I think that's that's the concern where the concern lies. And then last matchup of the slate in Korea is T1 versus HLE. Um, I think during the preseason this would have been considered as a marquee matchup, but Hanwha Life has been just playing like shit. Um, Clid and Jungle has been playing probably one of the worst. Uh, junglers in Korea. I know him coming over from China. I think they there has been some you know struggles uh, for Clid over the years, but I think HLE just has been struggling as a team. Even uh, Viper um, at AD Carry has been struggling as well. There are a lot of communication issues. That's exactly what the coach said for HLE. So until they fix that, I don't think they have any chance of beating T1. T1 has been playing lights out. They're the number one team in the LCK right now, um, statistically, but also by the eye test. Um, Caria has been pulling out all these unique support champions and obviously trying to like recreate the meta uh, for League of Legends at the moment, for especially for that support position. Um, I do think there that's a lot of creativity that, you know, uh, you know, gives HLE a lot to think about and a lot to consider during the ban phase, uh, picks and bans. I do think that's going to be play a huge role um, for T1, um, where T1 will get, will be able to get, you know, some, um, you know, popular or overpowering champions that they prefer. But even just without any of those like substantive analyses, I think, you know, T1 stats, you know, just, are so much better than Hanwha Life's, as mentioned, the jungle position gap is so, so vast. Um, and then Guma Yushi actually has been playing pretty well in the AD carry position. And then obviously Faker, I think he is so experienced, such a veteran that I think he is not going to let Zika, you know, uh, roll over Faker himself and snowball from there. Because I think that's probably the the best winning path for HLE to get Zika fed and Viper fed. Um, but in order to do that, Clid has to play well early, early game and then, you know, exert dominance over owner and around the map. But I just don't think that's going to happen. And Zika and Viper will probably have to do on his own, on their own. And I think against a veteran like Faker and Zika in the mid lane, I, I just don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be very, very difficult to do, especially in a best of three series. And then Viper, you know, we'll, we'll see if how he does. But Karia going up against Karia and Gumayushi, I think that's a tall task for HLE. So I have a T1 winning. I don't think I'm going to play any HLE, but, you know, you guys can prove me wrong. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But if you guys like the video tonight, uh, tonight, please, please hit the like button below um, and then subscribe to our channel. You know, that would mean a lot and I would greatly appreciate it.
But otherwise, yeah, I'll see you out there on Summoner's Rift and hope you guys make some money tonight. Good luck out there. Have a good one. Bye-bye.